Chapter 1201, Coming Uninvited, since they had planned to come check out the House of Treasures auction house at night, Molian had instructed someone to pay the fees for a private box beforehand. However, to stay inconspicuous, they did not use the best private box but found a standard one instead. They had only just got to their private box and sat down when someone kicked the door open aggressively. A folding fan snapped open, and a handsome face that was overflowing with smiles suddenly popped out from the doorway. Molian automatically rolled his eyes upon seeing this. You all are too heartless. You only think about yourselves whenever there's anything fun. You don't even give us a holler. Do you are new stomped in while fuming. Behind him followed Situ Yi as well as Daybreak sects Liang Kinking and Shang Kun. Kiao Mu was a bit surprised, but she stood up and greeted, Senior brother Situ, Senior sister Liang, Little junior sister. When did Senior sister Liang come? After coming out of the Mystic Beast Forest, the journey took a bit of time, so I only arrived last night Liang Kinking laughed heartily as she patted Kiao Mu's shoulder. Little junior sister. I haven't congratulated you yet for obtaining the phoenix egg. Your strength has increased by leaps and bounds yet again. Senior sister, it's not as exaggerated as you make it sound. It's only a small improvement, Kiam Yu deadpanned as she shook her head. On the side, Shang Kun involuntarily rolled his eyes in secret when he heard this. This child's road to advancement this entire time was like drinking and eating, so whatever did she mean by a small improvement? In any case, he had long been unable to perceive this child's state of cultivation with his present strength. A, hey, my little junior sister, I have already heard that you have broken through to the level 14 mystic cultivation state at such a young age. This is not any small improvement. Senior sister Liang laughed out loud as she grasped Kiao Mu's hand before sitting down on the side. She pointed at the men and turned from being the guest into the host, declaring, Hey! What are you all gawking there for? Sit, come sit. Sit you ye gazed at her exasperatedly before subsequently sitting down and saying with a smile, Crown Prince Mo, we have disturbed you today. This house of treasures auction house had been spreading news everywhere these two days, saying that they will be auctioning off two supreme grade treasures. One of them is that prolongation pill while the other is said to be an interspatial ring. This truly is a scarce item. Hence, everyone has come with this interspatial ring as their target. Right, right. I also want to see how many items this interspatial ring can store. If it is good, I will also compete with them for it. There are big and small interspatial rings, Molian stated indifferently. Depending on the spiritual weapon engineer's ability, the interspatial rings they forge will naturally be different. Du An Yu I crossed his long legs and casually bobbed them. We mystic cultivators inherently have inner worlds, so what are interspatial rings useful for? These are all external items, external items. Kiao Kiao, isn't that right? Kiao Mu nodded. She had storage talismans, so why did she need an interspatial ring? That was indeed an external item. On the other hand, the prolongation pill was concocted from high rank herbs and was one grade higher than a mid rank longevity pill. Nevertheless, it was still not of much use to Kiao Mu. Since she had a longevity tree, she only had to wait until the longevity tree blossomed and bore fruit. A longevity fruit was who knew how many times more effective than those longevity pills and prolongation pills. Benefactoress, I am hungry. Didn't you just eat dinner? Kiao Sen reached up vigorously rubbing the little monk's head. The little monk quickly peeled away Kiao Sen's hand and used his own fingers to squeeze his bald head. He then said with a straight face, hungry. As he spoke, he even rubbed his belly with his small hand before peering at Kiao Mu imploringly. Chapter 1202, Out of Expectation don't say that you're hungry if you were just feeling greedy for food. Kiao Mu took out some pastries and fruit from her inner world and stopped up those three foodies' mouths. Afterwards, she walked up to the window and looked down. By this time, the space below had been full to bursting. Numerous people, including many high-ranking officials and noble lords, had come to this house of treasures auction house. At this time, an enchanting attendant knocked on the door and walked inside. When her gaze flitted across the outstanding men inside the private box, 
her eyes couldn't help but brighten. The female attendant's belly showed as she swayed her body while walking over. She then handed a thin booklet to Molian, saying coquettishly, Young sirs, these are the items up for auction tonight. Please take a look. Molian did not take what that woman handed over. Instead, Hugh I think stepped in front of that woman and waved his hand in displeasure, we know. Just place that booklet on the table. You can go. That woman stomped her foot in a huff. Afterwards, she placed that booklet on a small side table before turning to give Ju a new way and sit you ye a flirtatious wink. Yet both males merely cast their gazes aside simultaneously, feeling like their eyes had been scarred. Seeing that no one paid her any attention, that woman stomped her foot again before walking out the door. Just as she closed the door, she heard a crisp, chilly voice asking, that person has an eye problem. The woman slipped, nearly landing on her butt. Kiao Mu was genuinely confused. She just saw that woman blinking crazily at Moli An and Du An Yue from the moment she came into the moment she walked out. If she didn't have an eye problem, what else could it be? Liang Qingqing chortled in laughter upon hearing this. She hooked Kiao Mu's shoulders and replied with a laugh, Right, right, she has an eye problem. Situ Yi could not help looking at Crown Prince Mo with sympathy, their little junior sister had yet to understand the matters of the heart. Crown Prince Mo's journey was long and full of hardships. As they spoke, Liang Qingqing picked up that thin booklet. When she opened the first page, she involuntarily snorted, Wow! This auction house is a bit interesting. Look at what it says here, the first auction lot, an item out of expectations. Ha ha, what could this item that is out of expectations be? Could it be a phoenix egg? Ha ha ha. Liang Kinking cracked a joke, and she ended up not being able to resist laughing at what she said. If this house of treasures really had a phoenix egg to auction off, then their publicity wouldn't just stop at this extent today. Perhaps they would raise a bigger commotion and make the news known to the entire world. Ju An Yu I shook his head. An item out of expectations Kiao Mu blinked before glancing about outside the window. She saw the auction room below quiet down instantly, and a middle-aged auctioneer walked up the stage with a smile. Subsequently, several robust, Adult men walked over while pushing an iron cage. This iron cage was covered with a piece of red cloth, temporarily blocking everyone's gazes. The people below started making a hubbub, their voices rising higher and higher as they delved into heated discussion. It wouldn't be some giant mystic beast, right? This indeed is not commonly seen. Mystic beasts and the like simply have no use to us normal people. Remove the red cloth quickly. Remove it. The hooting and non-stop shouts drew Du An Yue and Situ Yi to the window, and they looked down. This auction house has really gone all out to build momentum. Could this first auction lot really be some mystic beast? Liang Qingqing questioned with a blink of her eyes. At this time, a bewitching young lady walked up to the stage while holding a red sign. On the sign was written the first auction lot, a night amount of expectations. Everyone's curiosity had been piqued at this time and they quickly shouted out loud, start quickly, chapter 1203, that would be a wonder, stop keeping us guessing, remove the red cloth, let this lord see what exactly is this item that is out of expectations, will everyone quiet down with a smile, the auctioneer raised his hands and pressed down, gesturing for solemn silence, tonight, the House of Treasures auction is now starting. After the clash of the gong, the atmosphere in the room reached a fever pitch. The first auction lot, a night amount of expectations the auctioneer maintained an enigmatic smile before saying, everyone can first take a guess as to what is inside this gauge. Stop guessing, quickly remove the red cloth. Not guessing, not guessing. This old man bids 100 mystic currency. The auction hadn't even started yet someone already bid. This immediately attracted many sidelong glances and incurred draws of laughter. You lad, you're not afraid there would just be bird sheet inside this gauge. At that time, you would have spent 100 mystic currency to buy a pile of bird sheet. Ha 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 ha. Everyone started jeering in laughter. This lord will swallow the pill if it's bird sheet. That person roared while stiffening his neck. Who can fault this lord for having money? I oh. You're here pretending to be a lord with just 100 mystic currency. Then I'll bid 200. 200 mystic currency. So that you can call me dad. Ha ha ha. 
All kinds of laughter filled the hall. At this time, the auctioneer pressed his hands down and maintained an enigmatic smile, placating, will everyone first calm down? I will be talking about the detailed rules and regulations of the first auction lot. The first auction lot's starting bid is 1000 mystic currency. Each time's bid increase must be 100. There is no upper limit. We can start now. The auctioneer announced with a simpering smile. You're not removing the red cloth. Someone voiced their query. However, the auctioneer shook his head. Not removing. It won't be too late to remove the red cloth after someone bids on it. Everyone, why did they feel that this wasn't so reliable? If the red cloth wasn't removed, then who would know exactly what was inside the? What if it was just as other people said and there was a pile of bird sheet inside? Then wouldn't that mean that they had squandered their mystic currency for nothing? Momentarily, the originally lively atmosphere calmed them. 1000 mystic currency wasn't any small amount. It was enough to buy a lot of food. They still had to contemplate before deciding. At this time, a pot-bellied landlord in the room raised his hand. 1000 mystic currency. I request to see what is underneath the red cloth right now. Novo reach. Everyone's gaze is shifted to that landlord, who had on a worshipping gaze. That person immediately supported his pot belly and chuckled while waving his hand. You can remove the red cloth now. He was just curious as to what was under this red cloth. Of course, of course. The auctioneer immediately nodded. He slid his finger and the two burly men standing outside the iron cage immediately took the hint and removed the red cloth. Wah! The whole audience was in an uproar. Where was the huge mystic beast inside the iron cage? It was just a naked woman curled into a ball. After bursting into an uproar, everyone revealed disappointed gazes. Of course, this item that was out of expectations was just a gimmick to swindle money. How was a frail woman worth 1000 mystic currency? However, that landlord chortled and exclaimed with repeated nods, good, good, excellent, excellent. Although this woman had curled herself up, he could make out her glossy skin and her fine looks. This 1000 mystic currency could be considered worth it. He would just treat it as giving himself a concubine. The landlord laughed out loud, because he expected no one to compete with him for a female slave. He sat there smugly, thinking that this first auction lot was his. Chapter 1204, Meeting an Old Friend Again The auctioneer had already turned into a procuress at this time. His words were incisive and shrewd, sparing no pains to promote the girl inside the cage. Do not think that she is frail based on her looks. In reality, she is a level 4 mystic cultivator. However, everyone can rest assured, her mystic energy has already been curbed by drugs and cannot manifest. Think about it. The scene of a powerful mystic cultivator girl submitting beneath your feet. Ha ha ha, the feeling is not so bad. The reason why a person could become a procuress was that she was a money grubber that knew how to market her goods. Therefore, this auction ear right now was not to be outdone. After this round of advertising, some of the people who originally weren't all that interested started to follow suit and bid. Hence, the pot-bellied landlord's expression started to sink. To be able to become a mystic cultivator, this girl's constitution is naturally much better than normal girls. The auctioneer sniggered profanely and made another push, you simply do not need to worry that she will break from playing with her, right? This good is worth its price. At this time, Liang Kingking smacked the small table and shot up. Outrageous. Junior sister Liang, wait. Du An stopped her. On the other hand, Si Tu Yi stared fixedly at that large iron cage with a strange gaze. This licentious auctioneer had completely hyped up the atmosphere in the auction room. While going up to smack that iron cage, the auctioneer stimulated everyone's nerves with a loud, feverish shout. Right now, are there any more bids? Bidders have to hurry. The bidding for our first auction lot is about to conclude. The girl inside the cage looked up and stared ferociously at the auctioneer with an infuriated gaze. That look of a wolf cub did not carry much of a threat. Rather, it aroused a kind of flirtatiousness, inducing the pack of beasts in the room to howl unremittingly while drooling. The bidding price continued to increase without stopping. Hey, I'll be taking this little beauty. 
I bid 2000 mystic currency. I bid 3000. 3500. The pot-bellied landlord's face had completely darkened. 5000. Situ Yi suddenly walked up to the window and announced a bid. Everyone inside the room turned to look at him in disbelief. Io, roommate has bid 5000. Are there any bids greater than roommate's offer? If there are not, then that will be the selling price. The auctioneer was all smiles. After all, he was about to strike a sale of 5000 mystic currency, from which he could obtain a high commission. 5000 going once, 5000, 6000. The pot-bellied landlord roared furiously. This concubine that he originally could purchase for 1000 had now increased in price to 6000. He really was angry to death. 10000. Situ Yi coldly announced a price. Suddenly, the people inside the room all gave him weird looks. This was unlike Situ Yi. Cough, cough, cough. Du An coughed several times before asking, Situ Yi, are you lacking women? Situ Yi cast him a gaze before stating coldly with creased brows, She is junior sister Liu. Little junior sister should recognize her. Everyone turned to look at Kiao Mu. Kiao Mu nodded in admission. Speaking of this Liu Yexin, she had fought with her back when she was seven. Ah, number. It was that she one sidedly beat her up. It was at Kieta Village's assembly place that she, MHM, fiercely gave her a violent beating. At this time, Kiao Mu had already forgotten that she did not beat up Liu Yexin only once. She had even beaten her a second time afterwards inside an inn. Strange, how did Liu Yexin end up like this? Chapter 1205, A Trial Filled With Hardships Situ Yi lamented with a sigh, little junior sister. Do you still remember King Town? Kiao Mu nodded. Of course she remembered. After all. That was the place where she first encountered the seven celestial maidens of the holy water sect. When she thought about this, her gaze dimmed. Mo Lian grasped her small hand to comfort her, looking up to ask Situ Yi, that has something to do with this? It does Situ Yi nodded. That time, because of junior sister Liu's willfulness, we lost senior brother Wang. After returning to the sect, all the senior and junior brothers couldn't forgive her. Therefore, Junior Sister Liu left the sect and went out for practical training on her own Situ Yi side once again. Afterwards, we never saw her again. Yet this time, they actually saw her here. This truly was out of Situ Yi's expectations. As a witness, Kiao Mu also remembered Senior Brother Wang's incident. Senior Brother Wang promised her that he would stay at King Town by himself after they finished handling King Town's matters. After they left, Senior Brother Wang had probably chosen to commit suicide by himself. It was no wonder why everyone in the Heavenly Dao sect was unwilling to forgive Liu Yexin. They all resented her for causing Senior Brother Wang to get scratched by a zombie because of her willful mistake. In the end, he had no choice but to choose suicide. How could they forgive her? Upon mentioning King Town, Shang Kun also had a lingering fear. They truly had sacrificed too many teammates during the time's operation. Many were simply unable to return from King Town. Although their final gains were substantial, every time he thought about the huge sacrifice made, his heart would feel uneasy. After that operation in King Town, Liu Yexin left the Heavenly Dao sect and has been in practical training ever since. Kiao Mu couldn't help but be stunned. She didn't expect Liu Yexin this delicate little girl, to truly have the courage to leave her sect with just a bundle on her back. Going out for practical training as a minor level 2 mystic cultivator without her sect's protection at that time really was lacking. Come to speak of it, she had more or less left Heavenly Dao sect for 7 to 8 years already. Just now, that auctioneer had said she was a level 4 mystic cultivator now. It could be seen that her root constitution potential wasn't all that great. No matter what, the suffering she has gone through these years are enough to compensate for the previous mistakes she made due to her willfulness. Situ Yi stated lightly, she is my heavenly Tao sect's disciple, so I must rescue her. Senior brother Situ speaks the truth Liang Qingqing -Qing said with a nod. These bunch of people actually dare to treat females as playthings, auctioning them off for their amusement. Simply incomprehensible. After Situ Yi announced a bid of 10,000 mystic currency, 
that pot-bellied landlord finally gave up. The people below in the auction room looked at each other, seemingly not expecting this woman to get auctioned off for an astronomical price of 10,000 mystic currency. It had to be known that in this auction, prices were all valuated with high-grade mystic currency. 10,000 mystic currency was equivalent to 10 high-grade magnetite. Back then, that beautifying pill that Kiao Mu had tampered with had only been auctioned off for 103 high-grade magnetite. As for this young girl slave, everyone just viewed it as a high price that Anuvorish quoted because he refused to lose face. Meanwhile, the auctioneer was very satisfied. When he thought of the commission about to enter his pockets, he couldn't stop smiling. After striking his hammer three times, he proclaimed loudly, Roommate's guest has obtained this first auction lot for 10,000 mystic currency. It will be delivered to the guest right away. Chapter 1206, Looting the House of Treasures, 1. Kiao Mu looked up. Senior brother Situ, are you really going to pay? Situ Yi couldn't help but be amused. What else would I do then? Take back Liu Yexin without spending a cent, of course, Kiao Mu stated while pursing her lips. Upon hearing this, do you are new I immediately sensed that there was more to the little fellow's words. Do tell, do tell. What good plan have you thought up? This house of treasures auction house's purpose in setting up shop in the Mo Kingdom capital is to snatch business from my morning sunlight pavilion. Kiao Mu then leisurely pulled out several talismans and passed them out. Stick on an invisibility talisman and plunder the goods from their treasure trove. What do you say to this fun? Everyone looked at each other in bewilderment momentarily at a loss for words. Kiaolin jumped up and giggled while clapping her eyes. Amusing, amusing. Sister, I want to go too. Kiaomu nodded. Then we'll be leaving two people here. While holding his teacup, the little monk exhorted with a shake of his head. Benefactress, it is wrong to do this. Then are you going? The little monk nodded vigorously. Going. Everyone subsequently twitched their mouths. Slash this monk didn't have any integrity exclamation mark slash. Gyeo Kiao, I'm going with you to Anu. I grabbed an invisibility talisman and stuck it onto himself. Can you guys see me? Senior brother Ju Anui, senior brother Ju Anui, where are you? Liang Kinking cried out. Du An Yue's voice cropped up beside her. Stop pretending, you clearly see me. Liang Qingqing burst out laughing. At this time, the room door was pulled open. When the female attendant who had a swaying gait saw that only Situ Yi and another dashing young sir were left in the room, she couldn't resist coming closer. This young sir, I helped you bring over that girl slave. Two burly men escorted Liu Yexin in. She was struggling non-stop and her furious gaze involuntarily turned dazed when it suddenly landed on Situ Yi. Those two burly men impatiently pushed her into the private room and politely cupped their hands before swiftly retreating outside. The enchanting female attendant still wanted to flirt with Situ Yi some more, but when the latter swept her a glance, she couldn't resist frowning as she turned and walked outside while swaying her hips. When she stepped outside, she paused perplexedly and glanced left and right. It wasn't until the door closed bluntly behind her that the female attendant thought she was hearing things. Subsequently, she cursed Situ Yi for being unromantic as she walked off with a sway of her hips. Outside the door, Kiao Mu, Mo Lian, Du An Yue, and the three kiddos were standing in a line. However, as they were under the effect of invisibility talismans, mystic cultivators below level 14 couldn't see them. Just now, darling Giao had already made Mo Lian use his divine conscious to check if there was anyone in this auction hall whose cultivation surpassed level 14, so well. Right now, they were simply swaggering through the house of treasures as bold as brass. As long as they avoided brushing other people's shoulders when they walked past. Other people naturally wouldn't discover them. Kiao Mu beckoned toward the rest, and they all strutted up to the third floor. The two tanned burly men guarding the foot of the stairs stood tall and straight without averting their gazes. When our dear Kiao Sen walked past them, he even wiggled his butt and made faces at them. Slash these two big idiots exclamation mark slash everyone sniggered secretly. They were swaggering up the stairs like this, yet these two idiots didn't see them. It was obvious how dumb they were. Kiam you gestured to everyone, and they all trotted up to the door of the House of Treasures' storeroom. Chapter 1207, 
looting the house of treasures. 2. Two stalwarts and fearless guards were standing at the door to the storeroom. Yet just as Kiao Mu was about to move, Mo Lian grabbed her small hand and stood against the wall. The whole line of big and little kids also stood against the wall without moving as they watched a plump, middle-aged man dressed in a brocade gown walk past them. The middle-aged man coughed, sensing a chill at the back of his neck, before he turned around to look. The third floor hallway was empty, with two guards standing at the foot of the stairs, simply no fly could get in. Today is our house of treasures first auction. Guard well and prohibit miscellaneous people from coming over after instructing the two guards, he headed to his own resting room. After waiting for him to leave, Kiyami waved the talisman in her hand and stuck it onto herself, making her appear at the other side of the wall with a swish. With wall crossing talismans on hand, any looting business was a piece of cake. Afterwards, when she turned around to look, Molian and the others had already crossed over. Our dear little Kiao Sen's small face was rosy with excitement. If it weren't for the fact that his sister didn't allow them to speak, then he wished for nothing more than to howl with laughter while clapping his hands. After smothering his laugh, Du Anue observed their surroundings. It must be mentioned that this house of treasures stored some fine goods. Boxes of varied sizes were placed on several hundred treasure racks. There were miracle elixirs, cultivation techniques, as well as many mystic weapons. On the side, our dear little Giao Sen opened a box and pulled out a small black staff. When he pressed his hands on it, that staff popped open and extended. It really suited his small stature quite well when he held it. Confiscated. Giao Sen pragmatically stuffed this staff into his own storage talisman and then started to pick and choose from the items on the racks afterwards. On the other hand, Giao Lin was flipping through the cultivation and mystic techniques. The useful ones she would stuff inside the storage talisman, the ones that weren't she temporarily tossed them to the side. In contrast, the little monk was circling around the sacks of food in the corner and industriously collecting them into his storage talisman while chanting Amitabha. Kiao Mu couldn't resist her impulse to laugh when she watched these three little fellows. Mo Lian closed in and whispered, this habit of plundering is evidently inherited. After making a round through the storeroom, Du An Yue ployed some items before walking over. I've taken my pick. Don't leave what's left over to waste. Although they are all junk. You should take them home to give out to people Kiao Mu pointed at those cultivation techniques, mystic weapons, and pills that were still remaining. She then waved her small hand. Since she disdained this kind of junk, she didn't take anything else other than 5 million mystic currency. Du An Yu I waved his hand. The Du An clan is rich and doesn't need these. You guys should take them, see? He couldn't be bothered to bring things back for the Juan clan. Those bunch of idiots in the Juan clan didn't even deserve to get junk. Kiao Mu was aware of his conflict with the Juan clan, so she didn't say anything after giving him a glance. She then tugged Mo Lian's hand and suggested, you take these things away. In any case, with so many people in the hidden night pavilion, they wouldn't complain of getting more things. Mo Lian nodded and took out a new storage talisman sweeping up the remaining items. As for himself, he had just picked some slightly rare forging material and nothing else. Kiao Mu tilted her head, as if having thought of something. She then took out a brocade bag from her inner world and handed it to Mo Lian. Lian, this is for you. I snatched it from Sai Kong Fulling. Mo Lian's hand paused when he reached out to take the brocade bag. His mouth twitched imperceptibly as he asked, You really know Sai Kong Fulling? Chapter 1208, Looting the House of Treasures, 3. Hearing that there was something more to his words, Kiao Mu involuntarily blinked. I know her. I had snatched this treasure from Sai Kong Fulling. At that time, she was so furious. She was dying to tear me apart. Right now, they were enemies. Du An gazed at Kiao Mu speechlessly. She would naturally be angry after you robbed her. Kiao Mu puffed out her small cheeks. It's of no use even if she has it. Lian, see if it's useful. Only then did Mo Lian look down at the contents of the bag. His phoenix eyes suddenly lighting up. Glacial star sand? MHM. It's useful, right? Useful, very useful. This material was a necessity in the forging of divine weapons. Kiao Kiao. You're really amazing.
Mo Lian lifted the little fellow high up, however, the little fellow muffled his shout with her hand, S-H-H-H, quiet, quieter. Kiao Mu peered at the door, there were still two idiot guards there, standing right there like door guards. Mo Lian gave a suppressed laugh and said while pulling down her small hand, Kiao Kiao, I still lack a necessary material before I can help you reforge your Farul into a divine weapon. You are a divine weapon engineer. Du An nearly shouted, seeing that the little fellow was about to reflexively pounce over to muffle Du An's mouth, Mo Lian deftly covered Du An's mouth with the back of his hand before she could do so. Quieter. Kiao Mu glared at him. What? You're surprised and astonished, no? Mo Lian lowered his hand and promptly wiped it on Du An's back. He then affirmed with a harumph, I am a seldom seen divine weapon engineer. So puffed up. Du An rolled his eyes at him as he yammered back, I'm a seldom seen concealed weapons master. Kiao Mu covered her small mouth, and her small, stoic face suddenly displayed a vivid and brilliant smiling expression. The duo were instantly dazed and stared at her unblinkingly as they murmured, smiled, she smiled. You two are both not as amazing as my sister. My sister is also a talisman master. At some point in time, Kiao Sen had crouched at the duo's feet, declaring this while raising his head at them. Right, right, right. My sister is amazing, my sister is the most amazing. Kiao Lin nodded repeatedly as she helped the little monk gather the food stores in the corner. When she chanced upon delicious fruit, she would stuff several into her own storage talisman, which made the little monk so agitated that he wanted to pounce at her to snatch them back. His small bald head pressed against Kiao Lin. Don't snatch, leave some for sister. You guys can keep it. Kiao Mu looked at the three kiddos speechlessly. Food and the like was what she did not lack the most. When the sapling woke up, the food inside Paradise Planet was enough to feed her for more than ten lifetimes. Sister, there is a strange small box here. I don't know what it does. Kiao Lin tossed Kiao Mu a box the size of a fist. Upon opening it, Kiao Mu saw that it was an unknown seed. I have never seen this before either. This should be a kind of seed, Du An was assessed after a glance. It's probably not of much use. Just toss it. MHM, since it was tossed in the corner, it's probably not anything good. Kiao Lin nodded as she walked over while holding the little monk's hand. Everything's been cleared away. Then let's go back to our room. The group openly walked down the stairs and retraced their steps to room 8 on the second floor. To give Situ Yi and the others a surprise, they all pulled out another wall crossing talisman with mischievous smiles and crossed the wall with a swish. Senior Brother Situ, Chapter 1209 Take your own revenge. Situ Yi was sitting on the velvet cushioned bench and talking to Liu Yexin, who had finally calmed down after getting caught off guard by the little fellow's crisp voice. He quickly looked up and involuntarily laughed at their sudden appearance. You've returned, senior brother Situ, for you Kiaom you threw him a storage talisman and also gave one to Liang Qingqing. When she saw Shang Kun staring at her eagerly, she felt a bit ill at ease and reluctantly gave him one too. He he, thank you little junior sister Shang Kun was so ecstatic that he nearly took flight. After getting to know little junior sister, you would learn that she was actually quite a nice person. It was only that her expression was a bit cold. Wow, so many pills senior sister Liang squealed as she fondled the storage talisman admiringly. Little junior sister, these are storage talismans that you drew yourself, right? Okay. Meanwhile. Situ Yi put away that storage talisman in both amusement and exasperation as he asked Kiao Mu teasingly, Junior sister, this couldn't be hush money, right? Okay Kiao Mu nodded very earnestly, it was hush money. Later, when the people from the House of Treasures discovered that someone had plundered all the goods in their storeroom, they were sure to kick up a fuss. So she was giving them hush money to plug up their mouths. Upon realizing this, Situ Yi couldn't resist cracking up. And Liang Qingqing also laughed heartily as she pounced over to hug Kiao Mu, simultaneously rubbing her head. Little junior sister, you're too cute. Mo Lian hastily pulled her dear Kiao Mu back to his side, not letting you touch her. Liu Yexin sat quietly on the side, her eyes shifting as she looked at Kiao Mu. Afterwards, she lowered her gaze again. Hey, 
Kiao Mu called out to Liu Yexin. Liu Yexin looked up and nodded at Kiao Mu calmly, little junior sister. After this, Kiao Mu suddenly just didn't want to scold her, and she pulled her up instead. Go change your clothes. There was a small side room, and Kiao Mu closed the doors after pushing her inside. Kiao Mu then took out a set of clothes from her inner world tossing them to Liu Yexin. Change into these. Liu Yexin silently followed her order, turning around and swiftly changing her clothes. Why did things end up like this? I was careless and fell into an ambush during practical training. Liu Yexin lowered her head and explained softly. After rolling her eyes toward the ceiling, Kiao Mu stepped up to her with two strides in place of three and flicked her forehead. How come you also drained away your temper after seven to eight years of practical training? Where is the courage you had when you fought with me back then? How about the perverseness with which you ordered your hyena to eat me? Where did it go? Liu Yexin gave her a bitter smile. I was immature in the past. I, I have never seen someone as dumb as you, training yourself up onto the auction platform. With a brandish of her hand. Kiao Mu tossed her around core ravaging thunder. Here, don't blame me for not reminding you. There will definitely be a big commotion later, so the boss of this auction will probably come out. At that time, you know what to do. Whether you take your revenge, it's up to you to decide after finishing her piece. Kiao Mu felt a bit tired. So she turned to patter away, yet Liu Yexin gripped the core ravaging thunder and bit her lips with a lowered head. Afterwards, she pushed open the doors and walked out, as well. The two people returned to the private room, and the other people watched curiously as they came in one after the other. Junior sister Liu, don't think too much. It is quite dangerous to be undergoing practical training on your own as a young lady, so you should return to your own sect from now on. Liang Qingqing persuaded, Liu Yexin merely hung her head without uttering a sound. There wasn't a day that she didn't want to return to the sect or that she didn't miss her dad, but she was too ashamed to return. Chapter 1210, A Rush to Buy the Prolongation Pill, Situ Yi lamented with a sigh, back then, everyone was still young and aggressive. After you left, the senior and junior brothers also regretted it. Junior sister Liu, We'll just let bygones be bygones. This time, come back to the sect with me. Your dad, Hall Master Liu, hasn't been particularly well during these years. You don't want to go back and see him? Senior brother. Liu Yexin abruptly raised her head. Situ Yi simply patted her shoulder. All right, it's decided then. Liang Qingqing also consoled her with a smile. That's right, everyone are seniors and juniors from the same sect. So what can't you talk out? Junior sister Liu, if you want to go on practical training, then the sect will have plenty of opportunities in the future. Thank you, senior sister Liang. Liu Yexin nodded before turning to say to senior brother Situ, senior brother Situ, I, I'll do as you say. MHM. Situ Yi smiled before turning to tell Kiao Mu, little junior sister, you don't know that during the time you guys were away, this auction house successively auctioned off several excellent pills. The next auction lot is that prolongation pill. Prolongation pills are indeed good stuff. They are also of use to us cultivators. Liang Qingqing nodded with a smile. However, the little fellow burst her lips in disinterest. When Du An saw this, he exclaimed with a grin, Our Kiao Kiao doesn't think much of it, let whoever wants it bid for it. When Liang Qingqing thought of how the storage talisman that little junior sister casually tossed her just now contained a lot of pills and elixirs, she was all smiles as she concurred, that is rather so. Prolongation pills may be quite precious to other people, but in our little junior sister's eyes, it probably isn't all that useful. That's right, to Kiao Mu. Useless items were all designated as junk. While they were chatting, the next round of introductions had begun. This time, that auctioneer gave a long, extravagantly colorful commentary of that prolongation pill's various magical effects. His words made the daft crowd below howl feverishly, with ardor and zeal coursing through their blood. Hurry up and start. What's the starting bid? I must win this prolongation pill. Yeah, yeah. If I were to consume this prolongation pill, I might be able to add on several years to my life. This prolongation pill is effective for all mystic cultivators level 15 and below. However, the higher the mystic cultivators level, 
the fewer the years added to their lifespan, right, right, right. I heard that before too. For normal people like us, maybe it might add 10 or 20 years to our lifespan. Dream on. It will add on 10 years max. While everyone was embroiled in a lively discussion, the auctioneer announced with a smile, the starting bid is 100 mystic currency, and the minimum bid increment is 1000. With this sentence, the majority of the people's zeal was smothered with a swish. Ha ha, 100,000 mystic currency. You've got to be kidding, that was equivalent to 100 pieces of high-grade magnetite. Who was so rich and arrogant as to take out 100 high-grade magnetite at once? Only those juniors of large patrician families or nobles could be so bold. For them, the peanut gallery. They should just crack peanuts and watch the fun. They had better not fantasize about the prolongation pill. Tut tut, it's quite expensive. Liang Kinking clicked her tongue and commented, It won't become a past item, right? I see that not everyone can afford this price. There are plenty of people who want things like prolongation pills. Rest assured, it is impossible for this to become a past item, Situ Yi replied with a smile. Sure enough, just as he finished speaking, a female voice rang out, 100,000, 101,000, 